Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Bumper here, back today with another episode of The 39. I'm sure by now if you've been following the series you know what that is, but uh, just a quick run through that me and my buddy Trevor from Double Bill Movies, link below, um, are going through the 39 Category A video nasties and just sort of giving a modern view on them, whether you should be watching them in this day and age, you know, whether they were, were worth the video nasty title back then, things like that, okay? So we're some ways through now, even though we're still on D, on the alphabet we'll soon be moving into a territory where there's some better films because it's been a real slog lately um i've been a bit behind with my videos i won't get too much into it but it's been really busy with bank holidays and um going away and stuff and i had really bad sunburn i'm really under the weather at the moment but um i'm just doing this video to try and take my mind off it and i promised trevor i'd get it done as well so yeah so today then without waffling now we're on the movie don't go in the woods or don't go in the woods alone as it's called in some places okay there's numerous releases i don't own one of the releases so i had to stream it but you can get it um in this country um i think it might be on arrow i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure it is and then i've seen copies um in america as well i think the Niga syndrome will put it out with a lovely slip cover and stuff so it's not a um a buried classic or anything it is out there if you want to get it but i mean Unfortunately, it's just not a very good movie. So um, I think we'll start with Trev's notes first. So I got them here. Sorry, the um, screen's locked on the iPad. All right. So um, Trev gives an overview, first of all, then to say this is one I'd seen on YouTube when I was unemployed back in the day. Um, he says he fell asleep watching it at that time. And he said he's fallen asleep on every other subsequent viewing since. Subsequent, I can't even see my words today. I think I've seen the whole film, just not in one go. All right, so it is a bit of a slog to get through. It hasn't got a very long run running time, but um, it's extremely low budget, as you would expect. I can give you some information on this film, because when I watched it, I was a bit gobsmacked as to <laughs> how crap it was, really. So it turns out that this movie had a 60-page script, okay? 60 pages. That's how crap it was. Um, they had no money for special effects. All the blood you see in the film is used by using second hand, well, I say second hand, out to date barbecue sauce from a, from a local rib place or whatever. So um, all the blood's barbecue sauce, so there's that. Um, yeah, so they have to do all these things to save money. But my main gripe with it is, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie She Freak that came out on Agfa, uh, like a carnival movie that's padded um, with a lot of um, stock footage. Well, this is similar. Okay, so this has got a running time of, say, 80 minutes. But um, there's... Uh, got to be about 30 minutes of just stock footage so you've got these couple of kids in the woods uh, it follows them around a little bit the camera they're getting stalked by by this guy i don't know he looks like a cross between the predator some sort of bloody um homeless man and some sort of jesus freak with his bloody rosary beads all over his face i'll put a picture of him up by you anyway so he's he's like the sort of jason boy he's he's going around uh off in these kids in the woods but there's no real storyline or plot and just every now and again just to sort of fill the run time it will just be stock footage there's nothing to do with the the movie is the most weirdest thing ever they would have been better off just releasing a 40 minute movie because it takes you so out of it it's unbelievable so um yeah so um, the main questions that we always ask, did it feel like watching a video nasty? So Trev said, no, not really. It's not brutal or graphic enough. I kind of agree with him. I can see why it is a video nasty, because it does have some of the other um, things that you'd expect to see, like the bad dubbing and the shit acting and the crap special effects and whatever. But um, yeah, for a movie that is solely made around its kill set pieces because uh, there's no storyline there um yeah for a movie that's based around that the kills they just weren't um very good at all i gotta be honest or very violent until the end but we'll get back to that in a minute so the next question really is should it be a video nasty so trevor said no not really um you can take it either way really um whether you want it whether you think it's a nasty or not but um Nah, it wasn't really that brutal or that bad or anything, so no reason um, to be scared to watch it. Um, then it says, should a modern horror fan check it out? Uh, Trev said, no, not really. It doesn't have anything in it that a modern horror fan would like. Um, yeah, I kind of agree. There's no point in watching this film, really, unless you want a lesson in how not to make a film. I mean, like I said, it's hilarious when you think it only had a 60-page script and, um, you know, <laughs> the barbecue sauce and things like that, what they could get away with to get a film out on the shelves. But, nah, there's no real point in watching this film, I've got to be fair. So, Trev's final thoughts are that the film um, 
had a really annoying score like a lot of the other ones so yeah the problem with the scores in these films is they don't really match what's going on on the screen and they do just sound like a five-year-old let loose on a casio they, they sound like the ones like the auto the auto tunes they got on them you know that you used to play um like old school ringtones but um yeah it's not great really um he does say that the same is designed to put you on edge which it is by being loud and sort of eccentric but i don't really work um, and then he says it just clearly didn't have much budget for the film, which is true, you know. Um, even the director comes out and says that there's no stars in it or anything. Um, it does say, Trev does say the best bit of the film for me was when they found the killer's house. Um, and what it's like inside is pretty cool. So the movie, I've got to be honest, it did pick up in the last 10 minutes. Um, there's a scene, like Trev says, where they go to this house, a uh, killer's house, and they find one of their friends dead. There's a girl and the camera pans out and oh my god it's a mess like the blood looks pretty good it's just everywhere it looks like a scene from a french extreme movie because um like there's all lacerations all over the body and the blood's everywhere and that was pretty good actually that was really well done but um you know obviously one little scene like that can save the movie um yeah so my final thoughts are similar to treads really um it's not really much you to check out. It's not going to waste too much of your time if you do decide to watch it, but it is really just a, a lesson in bad filmmaking. Um, we'll be moving on to some better films, like I said at the start now, but we still got to get Driller Killer done. That's the last one of the Ds. I know that's got a good director in Abel Ferreira, but um, it's a movie I remember not enjoying when I was younger, but we'll give it another go anyway. So, um, yeah, sorry to leave this one a bit short and sweet, but there's not much to be said really on Don't Go In The Woods other than... Um, <laughs> It's just a bit crap. All right, so Trev gave it 5 out of 10. I'm going to go one lower and give it 4 out of 10. Not much year to um, go back to in the future. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.